Welcome back to more Manor Lords, part two of our great adventure. We're back, and this time we are streaming and recording it. So Twitch, say hi to YouTube. YouTube people, you can't say hi to... Well, you could say hi to your future Twitch selves or your past Twitch selves, however you want to do it. But from now on, we'll be streaming and recording this series to uh, share it live on Twitch and record, edit, and upload it for YouTube. The aim is to have daily uploads of this over the next couple of weeks, uh, probably until um, car part number two, our second uh, son is born, and then there'll just be carnage in the schedule for a little bit until I'm back from paternity leave. But at last, at last, Mana Lords. Oh, it's so good. So yeah, this is where we got to at the end of the first episode that went out exclusively on YouTube. For those on Twitch, this is your first time seeing our little village of Leondis. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you like it. We've just placed our church and we are getting ready to go after the bandits in this region to our south because I can't show the events here because when you reload, it clears the events list. But they have been stealing resources from us. They've taken some lumber, some timber from us. And they also took my tools, which were like my starting resources. One of my starting resources. I can't get them back. Uh, I can build, I can is it, eventually produce some more. But um, yeah, that that's potentially slowed me down. So damn you bandits. We need to go take you out. There's 16 of them. I've counted them. There's 16 of them by these tents. These, these brigands. I can currently raise 16 recruits. I'm, I'm tempted to wait a little bit longer because I have 20 spears and 20 shields for spearmen. So I'd kind of like to take a full unit. But if nobody else joins the village soon, then I might just have to go with what I've got. Send them to the murder forest. Yeah, I mean, the murder forest quite literally in this run is here. The hunting forest, because that's where we are um, hunting wild animals although we're letting them replenish right now we've set a, a hunting limit of 10 on our hunting camp and i've actually taken all of my families out of the hunting camp and instead another bandit camp oh what the heck where's that one? Oh, that's all the way over there okay but the bandits are spreading which means they may come and pillage that's not good we don't like that I think I think they eventually come and raid you. We I think we're we're safe from being raided for um for two years. So they shouldn't come at us just yet. But we can go take them out because they're certainly harassing us. I've got all of my um hunters onto the forager hut now. We've got two families there, and they are going for berries. We've got lots of berries, and they also own a little market stall. They've set up a little Little market stall here. He's got he's got some goods. He's got some wares. He's got some eggs, some bread, some meat, and berries. He's looking pretty happy. But yeah, I want to see if I can get another family or two in. How much timber have I got? Okay, I've got enough timber. I might build some more plots. I was actually thinking of popping a new road through here. A new pathway of the village thinking of yeah maybe maybe link on up actually to the foragers hut there and then maybe we can have a little bit across here new mercenary companies available i mean we can't afford to hire them because we've got no gold in the treasury but let's just have a look at who's popped up the green caps the brotherhood of the forest and the flock of crazy they keep showing up the flock, flock of crazy geese they cost a lot as well we don't we don't have the treasury for that we will actually get some region wealth or some treasury when we clear a bandit camp but i'm probably going to go for region wealth so we can invest it in our own little village um so let's build some more burgage plots um i'm thinking of having the tannery right next to the hunting post so let's do a couple more here Oh, okay, I can't. Ah, that kind of sucks. You can't. Both of them can't have stuff. What if I go, because I put the granary there. Uh, you know what? That's fine. That's fine. That'll do. They don't all need to have stuff out the back. Oh, we. I think we just gained another recruit. Yes. I want to get up to twenty. I think to form a full militia group, and then we will march them to war. I can also rename 
everyone in here. So I don't know if we'll get around to doing it today because I just want to crack on with the gameplay. But probably for our streams next week, um, subs can request being um, being a character in the game. I'm pretty sure we can go in and click where they're working and then we can rename them. So instead of um, Enlian, she could be Claire. They have voice lines. There is the yeah, there is like little little bits of banter that goes on. So if you follow them around long enough, they'll they'll say funny things. There was a bug where you couldn't rename the oxen, or if you did rename them, it changed it back. Oh, I didn't actually mean to call you Trev. I want to call you Trevor. Oh, it actually just closes down when I try and do it. Interesting. Yeah, okay. Mm. Or is it because I've got that selected? But yeah, they don't stick, but people do. No, pressing V, I think, afterwards just opens up a hotkey. <laughs> oh, you're pressing V for army. Ha! <laughs> yeah, so you can't actually name anything with V in it. There you go. Tim. I'm pretty sure it doesn't say their names, though. No, it just defaults it back. But for people, it sticks. Because if we go over here, we should have Claire. There's Claire. We'll name some peasants, Tim. Okay, we've got 18 recruits now. Perfect. Uh, we won't get them yet. Oh, there we go. My creating your first militia unit. Okay, cool. Male villagers will be evenly distributed between all militia units. They will then try and find the required equipment. The weapon and the shield depends on the unit type, while maximum quality of body armor and helmet depends on the villager's residential level. After bringing all the necessary equipment home, the unit recruits are marked as ready to rally. Only then will be able to able to rally your unit. Okay, let's let's yeah, let's create that for now. So we can have a maximum of 36 in there. So it's small, small groups, but we've got the weapons for them. We can actually get some archers probably fairly quickly once we get to level two plots. Um, we've got another family. So what I'm going to do is get that tannery going. Also save firing off. Um, uh, yeah, just pop it there. That'll do. And then we can actually put that spare family into work in the tannery. They'll create a little market stall for it as well. I'm assuming there's no keys to give away for early access. Uh, no, nothing yet. Might be able to have a key giveaway though on the 26th though. Have a chat with Games Planet, see if we can have some keys to, to give away. But right now it's just uh, pressing content creators with access. Yeah, I'd like to do some farming eventually, but we don't really have the best start for it. So I'm going to focus on other bits of production. I might even look into industry. Um, although we don't have a deep clay or iron deposit. Probably do some stone bits and pieces. Uh, I'm just looking at how we go about claim. So I can claim it with influence or claim with king's favor. I don't know if we get king's favor in this. Claim with influence, we need a thousand. I'm pretty sure we'll gain influence, brain settlement level, enacting a policy or conquering bandit camps and upgrading your churches and manors. Okay, perfect. In fact, actually, I didn't even look. The game's called Manor Lords. I didn't even look at me manor. That's the first little manor I can get. Where would be the best place to have that? I kind of feel like at the top of the village. Although, that's where we've got all our industry. I don't know, maybe like over here. Kind of thinking of future plans, but we're going to be building lots more stuff. Um, a settler's camp is then... On the empty claimed uh, to actually... Okay. No command. Yeah, I've got to command it first. I've got to claim it first. Then I can put a settler's camp and that will let me start building another little village over there, which is pretty cool. And then you can use... I found it earlier. But is it like the mule? The logistics, that's it. The pack station to use mules to send resources between two different villages. Oh, it's lovely and rainy for September. Autumn harvesting, plowing and sowing crops. 
We're gonna our berries are gonna be oh they're still seasonal okay but they're not they're not restoring anymore. Yeah, but we've got so many there that should keep us fed through winter quite comfortably. How many? How much more firewood have we got? How many people have we got here? You can see where they all are with that. That's fine. got anyone in the sawmill but that is okay you guys are planting their construction complete nice good, good good yeah we just need the tannery up and running i'm actually going to increase the priority on that over the other burgage plot my opponent already has two villages they, they have claimed two regions but they don't build on the map not in early access in this current build um maybe they will do eventually but it's an off off map opponent. So once we choose to challenge them and claim their regions, I assume they'll start sending troops against us and we'll have to fight them for them. All right, while it's going, let's speed up time. Get the tannery built. Our approval is increasing for more growth. Tannery's done. Let's get somebody in there. Nice. Lovely. They finished their clothing hut. Okay. So they've now got that leather in there, which actually means we should be able to upgrade some of our burgage plots although we'll need to see they'll need the supply of it and it will always go to the ones closest first so you guys can actually now upgrade to level two level two burgage plots generate one regional wealth per family per month unlocks new extensions including artisan workshops residential requirements will increase let's do weird so you just gotta wait for that all to be supplied out from everyone to realize there's a hot new clothing stand in the in the village Tended to by Kunrad, the peddling the tanner. Your troops, I'm assuming they don't station 24 7. So you only muster your troops. Um, you only, you only, yeah, they only, they only fight as troops when you kind of rally them. Obviously, bear in mind that what all the time they're rallied, they're not then contributing to the rest of their family's tasks. So while the rest of the family will try their best to keep working in the places that you've designated them to um they'll be they'll be a man down um so they won't be as effective at producing the goods and you might find some industries completely stop altogether so you kind of you've got to balance it um when i was when i was playing this the other day before i started recording i actually i was in the same spot actually but the um, bandit camps were all spawning up over here, like right in the thick of the forest there. There's actually one over here. But they were all spawning up in the forest. And the time it took me to send my troops all the way over there to clear the bandit camp away and then come back, that was so long without having like a solid amount of manpower working the fields and working the industry. So you've got to, you've got to balance that as well. Oh, we've got uh, full 20... 18... Fruits missing... So we can choose to rally them or we can remove them. I'm just going to fast forward it again to get that built, that constructed. I wonder if that will give us enough for a full 20 militia. So they're currently improving the building. Hard at work. Do you have enough people that you could have a small army permanently? Um, I guess potentially, although again, this very much reflects that during this time period, you didn't really have professional standing armies. The only unit that kind of reflects a, a, a small elite standing army is your law, Lord's personal retinue, which you get when you build your mana. Um, outside of that, though, you are very much raising the, the local militia, the little levies and fjords and what have you. Um, that would otherwise be working the fields so you have to kind of constantly balance that and that that is very um 
reflective of the of the period. I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's saying we've got one level two family, but I don't think is it level two families don't act as as recruits. I might just cancel it and see if I can do it again. I've only got 18 recruits. So I wonder if it's maybe that you guys don't then. Do I lose them from the population? I'm not sure. Can't find a store. Oh yeah, that's that's a like a bugged one that pops up, I think. Because they've got the items in there. Oh no, they've taken them out now. But we've only got 20 recruits. Uh, we've only got 18 recruits. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. That's waiting for somebody. That's waiting for somebody. So we might be able to get the people in that way anyway. We should attract them. Our population should increase. Harvest season has ended. We're into October. Yeah, there we go. We've got enough to war. Have we got enough firewood? Five months. 20. Boom. Right. Spear militia. I think it's all being distributed out to the houses. So I don't think we need to worry about any of that. So they should just rally straight away. Granny's got loads of berries. Let's go hunt some... Bandits. Let's rally them here. Here they come. Moving your units. Select units with left mouse button. Uh, hold and drag left mouse button to select multiple units. Come on, units with right mouse button. Hold and drag right uh, mouse button to form a line. Hold alt while dragging to keep the formation. Uh, when multiple units selected, control and right click to draw waypoints. Combat strength of your units depends on many factors. Stances, morale, fatigue, and effectiveness. So here they all are, gathering up from the fields. And from all their homes. Grabbing their spears and equipment that they've stored there. Just have them formed up. In fact, I wonder if we could have them formed up here. The village in the background. That should look good. Everybody say cheese. These be the fighting men of the village. Right. Which one was it? I thought it was control. To set waypoints. Maybe not. We've got different stances. We're on balance stance. There's stand your ground. Try to stand their ground. Defense is doubled, but attack frequency is halved. Push forward. The soldiers try to push forward with their full force. Um, missile alert. One I probably like the most is actually give ground, especially when you've got multiple units. Slowly pushes the formation line backward, luring the enemy to follow and pull them out of formation. So yeah, we're going to go after the enemy bandit camp over there. So I'm just going to tell you guys to go form up here. For the time being. I'm running with you guys, which will tire you out, but it's fine. Let's follow them across the fields. Is that the Holy Squad? Yeah, it's the Holy Squad of the village. Across the river, up the other side.
And yeah, this is primarily all done by one one dev. He's had a few other people like come in and do some additional asset work and art stuff, uh, I believe. But he's primarily coded all of it himself. Slavic magic. But again, this will be releasing into early access. Um, the game will still be likely in full-on development for quite a decent amount of time to come. Having the different colours on the shields as well. Right. Let's go take out some bandits that keep looting my supplies and winter stores. Oh, they've clearly been alerted to our presence. They're mar marching towards us. Let us march to meet them. We'll meet them in the open field. Arslings form a shield wall, indeed. This very much does give me like Last Kingdom vibes from all the kind of the smaller skirmishes and, and battles and what have you, which I quite enjoy. Yeah, we kind of got spear militia. There are archers. There's, I think, swordsmen as well. Standy ground. Defense is doubled, but attack frequency is halved. That's fine for now. Then we'll press push forward once we've held them a bit. Stand. Stand. How are we doing? They've got 14 left. Hush. Yeah. They've lost four so far. Hold the line. Oh, nice. Victory! And we didn't lose anyone. Amazing. Right, well, they run off fleeing. Let's go take out their camp. Flee, flee for your lives. Don't actually know if it's going to have uh, Steam Workshop support. I'd be very surprised if it didn't eventually, but I don't believe it will do for its initial early access release. I think, I think people will find a struggle with this game, though. Myself included, I already find it a struggle. Is I just want to zoom in and follow my, my villagers around all the time rather than actually building them. And suddenly I'm like, oh crap, yeah, I need to optimize production or do something or, or make more firewood or something. It's just such a gorgeous looking game. A new message. Spoils of war. When searching through the enemy belongings, you find a stash of goods. Yeah, they're mine. 
Um, they could be sent to your people who surely need them, though it is your right to keep it. So you can say it belongs to your treasury, which you then get gold that you could spend on things like mercenaries and I think a few other bits and pieces. Or we can send the resources to the nearest town, which I don't think we'll get the, the stuff they stole back, which is kind of a shame. But I think what we'll get is regional wealth, which we can use to upgrade our burgage plots, which would be quite useful. So send the resources to the nearest town. Regional wealth gained, 135, so now 140 total. Perfect. I mean, I could take these guys while we've got them and go after that other bandit camp. It's just, it's a decent chunk of time to be without my, my guys, but let's do it. Let's go take out more bandits. Let's um march over there. I'll run you guys over there. You've gained some experience. Have we had any more people join? I think we have had more people join, actually, which is good. So there will be some production that we can still kind of do. Um, what I'd like to do, we actually want to upgrade our small village to a medium village. All we need to do is get one more burgage plot to level two, like this one. So let's do that. And then let's pop in. You've got chickens. Let's have some chickens here. And I specifically made this one massive so that we could put in vegetables. So let's pop a big veggie plot in there. Um, that will all need gold for all of those artisanal. Oh, oh, well, hang on. We gained. What did we gained more money for? Regional wealth gained 134. Did we find something? We've just gained it again. Oh, no, that's staying. I thought for a minute that was a bandit camp. No, we're fine. Just gave it to us again? I don't know. You know what? I'm not going to question it. Cool. Thanks. Extra gold. Boom. Um, Goat shed as passive yield of hides. But I think I'm going to go for more chickens here. Uh, more chickens there. Slow the burbage plot inf influence. Yeah, so the chickens, it doesn't matter how big you build the plot. For vegetables, the larger the burgage plot, the more vegetables that can be planted. But it also increases the amount of time that's required for that family um, to, like, till and plow the land. Um, so you kind of want to balance it. They These guys as well, they are a... The firewood cutters. So actually, if anything, I want to give them a job at one of the nearby um, kind of job sites, essentially. So I want to make them the loggers or the saw pit, essentially, because then they won't have faster travel. It means they'll have more time at home to till their own earth and kind of manage their own um, vegetable production. They've got another firewood store. That's cool. Um, but yeah, it doesn't matter how big you build your plots to put chickens in. I would assume the same thing is true for orch apple orchards as well. Apples take quite a lot of time to establish. I think they take nearly three years for the apple trees to give you a decent yield. Uh, I'm going to upgrade this as well to a level two. I'm going to make you guys produce me some bows, I think. Look, that's level two. Although artisan family, level two families, they if you make them then artisans they won't be available in the regular pool for for jobs and what have you uh, hunting cam back up 27 out of 40 that's fine how much fuel have we got fire we got plenty plenty of supply i guess we could be doing some more building really how are you guys doing okay you're heading towards that camp yeah i kind of want to get you there before the the winds of winter you're pretty fatigued, though. You'll recover in time. In fact, I'll tell you guys to chill here so you don't draw the enemy to you straight away. Uh, we need a small... Quite a certain small village. We are currently a small village. That's fine. Um, but we need planks and that stone. Yeah, let's try and get our... Let's 
Let's try and get our mana up and running. Stone cutter camp. Pop one there. We can manage that. And then we'll need people in the saw pit. That's fine. You always want to leave one family spare for construction. That's what we've got. Got his miserable weather in the village. Chickens are getting wet. How are we doing over here? Very fatigued, so before I send them in to fight, I want them to recover a bit. Oh, it's stormy weather. Look at the wind going the trees. Oh, wow, lightning as well. to us yet have we no they haven't formed up as a force yet but we need our fatigue to recover because otherwise i don't think we'd lose but i think they put up a pretty decent fight against us okay right back to our village Check. What do we need to upgrade our church to a small stone church? Stone, funnily enough. And roof tiles. Roof tiles we get from clay. We need stone for that. So, yeah, having these guys set up as a stone camp would be good. So, we continue to get more people in. Level to high population growth. Oh, good. Because we're above 75. I think that, that triggers it, yeah. That's really good growth now. I think we can just throw in a load more pl burgage plots as well, actually. Just need to figure out where we want to expand the village through and to, and I guess all around here. So we can now make these guys go... Um, they can make bows, actually, for us. Joiner's workshop, wooden parts, and shields. Converts all inhabitants to artisans, locking them from being assigned to other jobs. Yeah, so we definitely need some more before we start doing that, I think. Set those plots all across. Okay, it's three big plots. I want to expand it as well. Yeah, build them. Nice. I feel like we can build a load more along here as well. Enough goods, my lord. That's fine. I should get the people coming in, though. Might need to actually have someone at the granary.
And we got a burgage plot. Oh, that one, I was say, that one's nearly done, surely. 98%. But remember, it's all going to be slowed down a fair bit because we don't have uh, most of the men of the village back. There we go. So we've got another development point. Um, not really doing farming just yet. I was tempted by the orchery, although we could make some money with some trade by going for trade logistics because then it locks the maximum cost of a new trade route to 25. Either that or I want to go for apple orchards because they take three years to be fully grown. So you unlock these development points as you um, up level up your, your settlement as such by hitting the requirements. Uh, if you hover over the, the settlement name at the top of the UI, it'll tell you what you need to do to, to get that. Um, basic armor making. Burning, uh, charcoal burning. Converts one firewood into two charcoal, making refueling twice as efficient. That's quite useful. That's really good if you've got deep, um, if you've got rich resources on something you can mine, like iron or clay. Deep mining means you can build a deep mine, and that means you can extract resources indefinitely if placed over a rich resource or a rich deposit, which we don't have. Hmm... I haven't worked out with the foreign supplies yet whether I want to do that or not. I don't think I do. Better deals. That, that makes you a load of money through that. I will go for trade logistics for now. Might get the orchards next time. Means we need to set up some trade. But let's just see how our warriors are doing. The brave men of the village. Yeah, their fatigue's not too bad now. Let's march on and meet the enemy. Surely draw them out from their camp. Winter is coming. Oh, we gained some influence as well. Does that mean we can... Oh, no, we need a, we need a thousand. So yeah, we need to just keep going and swatting all these um, bandit camps for a while. Because then when we gain a thousand, we can claim another region. Um, that's got a rich iron deposit, actually. Not a good clay deposit. But this is the one I wanted to go for for my bread basket. So it's got really good fertility for wheat production. That's got a rich deposit for clay and for iron. I wonder if this one... Can this one... No, not great. Emma fertility. This one's great, though, for it. Which would be wonderful. We're getting wet, my lord. You'll be fine. We built these stone? No. Probably because we don't have any men of the village free. We should have some. What do we need for the next level? 10 burgage plots at level 1 or higher. And then 5 at level 2 or higher. That's fine. Oh, they are, they are building, actually. They're upgrading that one. got to work on those. We've also set them to work on these. It's going to take some time, bless them. So I think we should probably try and deal with the enemy with the limited fatigue that we've got. Although the fatigue is affecting our effectiveness. But let's see what happens. 
Are there any ruins around? Sometimes ruins on the map, which are cool to check out. And that's some quite nice terrain over there. Oh, yeah, there we go. We've upset them. Bandit spotted me, Lord. You build small villages and spread out in different regions. Yeah, essentially. You can build up your village, though, into, into sort of medium to large towns. Yeah, you can prioritize construction, but for now, there's just not that many people there to work on it, so I'm not worrying too much. Have them stand their ground, start with, take the initial charge from the enemy, and then we'll have them push forward, counter them. We'll come back to you guys in a minute. Note to self, when you hear screaming, go check out how your poor peasants are doing. Some firewood. Nice. Didn't mean to make the stables the central, the kind of central focal point in the village, but that's how it's worked out. Kind of nicely, actually. New family member moved in. Oh, nice. Good. I should go check them. Get like a bird's eye view. Well, that'd be pretty cool to do like that on a, a slightly larger engagement. Can hear them chatting. it from up here. So they really, yeah, shunt into their shields. They've done some really cool uh, animating for the fighting here. I'll be surprised if we get out of this unscathed. If we don't start losing some of our... Uh, peasants. They're, they're way more effective than we are. But I think numbers and better equipment's going to win the day here. Okay, we've taken out one of them already. There we go. They're going down. Right. Push forward. You may be a tanner by day, but this day you're a warrior of Leondis. Hope is kindled. Fine warriors, each and every one of you. Now go pillage that camp. I'm surprised we haven't lost anyone yet. I'd hate to lose everybody's favourite villager, Herman. The berry plucker. Random dude walking on the road. Uh, that was a uh, trader, I believe. A bit overgrown this bit. There he is. He's a trader. So if you build a trading station, I think you can then have them stop by. A trading post. Uh, trading livestock with trade post. Or is it that one? That one. Traveling merchants. Yeah, that's what I believe he is. Just wandering the land. Quite a sunny November all of a sudden. Oh! 
There we go. Four spores of war. Um, we are going to continue sending the resources to my town. Because I want that regional wealth to boost our own stuff. We gain more influence as well. Don't believe there's any more bandit camps on the map just yet, but they will keep spawning in time. Um, I don't know if it's quicker just to disband them now or... Oh no, you can't disband them outside the home region anyway. So we might as well, we might as well get them back home because the victorious warriors... And then put them all straight back to work. 